Emu Field is a remarkable location to history enthusiasts in Australia and abroad. Most known for its use and acquisition of land as a part of Operation Totem, a pair of nuclear tests conducted by the British government in October of 1953, it's probably most famous for its role in creating the atomic tank, an Australian centurion which suffered light damage and was able to run on its own power after the blast only having run out of fuel, the tank then going to serve in Vietnam. But did you know about the atomic Mustangs that were also present at the site? Emu Plains, as it was known, was isolated by a vast expanse of the most hostile and arid wasteland in the world. During 1953, hundreds of scientists, technicians and military personnel lived and worked in this area, as the vast and complex preparations to study the effects of the most terrifying weapon in history. As well as the enormous array of scientific test instruments, several other items were arranged around the bomb to see what the effect with the blast would have on them. A 52-ton Centurion tank, the superstructure of an unknown battleship, for the life of me I could not find a single pit picture aside from this one from a cruiser turret with markings for Adelaide and the test site on it, and finally six CAC piston engine Mustang fighter aircraft were placed directly round the target area. The CAC Mustang was an aircraft produced in Australia by the Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation. Its counterpart, originally designed and built by North American Aviation for use in the Second World War, Australia acquired the rights to build the aeroplane under licence for use by the Royal Australian Air Force. The first of these Mustangs, A681, in 1945, was tested thoroughly by test pilot Jim Schofield. Well, the very first test flight of the Mustang was uh, uh, very uh, rewarding sort of a feeling. The Mustang was an extraordinarily good aircraft. Uh, it was particularly suitable for long-range escort flying. There were fighters that were slightly faster, but none of them had the overall performance of the Mustang. The aircraft were then flown out of storage, landed at the airfield close to the test site, and arranged in such a way to protect them from the blast. Two Mustangs were placed in the front of the dirt mound, three behind, and a sixth placed further up the road. After the two atomic explosion, further tests moved to a new site named Maralinga in South Australia, abandoning Emu site, which was within an air and ground prohibited area. In 1967, a British Army clearing operation was removing and burying all remaining equipment and buildings. Because the Mustangs were owned by the Australian government, well, officialdom required for their disposal, which followed the normal tender process by submitting a token bid, and a group of enthusiasts was granted access to Emu to inspect the Mustang as prospective purchasers. A68-1 was the first Australian disassembled Mustang by CAC at Fisherman's Bend in Melbourne, 1945. The desert sun and the harsh climate had faded away the cereal and Randall, but the cereal could be clearly red as it was etched into the metal of the aft fuselage. The successful bid of the Department of Supply Tender for the Six Mustangs was by an American dealer Stanley Booker of Stan's Airplane Sales, Franzo, California. He was in Adelaide at the time of purchasing the RAAF for disposals Dakota at Parafield. He struck a deal with an Adelaide group of pilots and engineers headed by the charter pilot Tony Schwert. I heard the planes were there by word of mouth, uh, so to speak, back in the, in the very early 60s. In fact, uh, whilst I was in the Air Force, I had just kept an eye on them generally um, up until the point in time when the tender came out. In return for them carrying out the dismantling and removal of the Mustangs overland Adelaide, they could choose the best aircraft for themselves. In a mammoth effort, the team worked in a sweltering heat to dismantle five aircraft which were removed by truck along with a rough track to the Transcontinental Rail Line at the siding where they were sent by rail to Adelaide. Selected A68-1 as their own and with the looming military deadlines evacuate EMU by the end of October 1967, he worked tirelessly for two months with a crew of people in order to rescue and possibly save one of the aircraft into a flight-worthy status. Tony Schwert flew it out of the 31st of October 1967 to Cooper PD with a gear fixed down. Once clear of Maralinga, a restricted area, there was time for talks with the DCA, which granted a ferry permit for Tony to continue his flight to Cooper PD, Adelaide. In a twist of fate, he was then escorted by the Department for Civil Aviation Aero Commander, flown by senior official Jim Schofield, who also had been the test pilot for the first flight of Fisherman's Bend. And despite well wishes and everyone's hopes that the day where the Mustang would stay at Parafield as a privately owned civilian aircraft, the 
Department for Civil Aviation enforced their policy restricting civil operation of former military combat aircraft on the basis that during their service lives they could have been subject to unreported manoeuvres beyond their design limits. And for the next two years, throughout 1968 and 1969, the Schwartz Syndicate appealed the uh, policy and the DCA took legal action against Tony for his unauthorised flight from Emu to Cooper Pedy. And while the aircraft sat dormantly sitting at Parafield, the Adelaide group got an offer from Stan Booker to sell him A68-1. Uh, the irony was that within weeks they had learnt that their submission and those of fellow Adelaide pilot were for his CAC Mustang had resulted in the DCA reviewing their policy and a certificate of registration for A68-1 arrived in the post, but it was four days too late. They had already negotiated a sale with Mr. Stanley. The other five EMU Mustangs were shipped to San Francisco aboard uh, MV Sierra, leaving Port Adelaide on the 20th of January 1968. They were reportedly damaged on the wharf at San Francisco by anti-Vietnam war protesters after a local news paper said they would be used in Southeast Asia. In fact, Mr. Stan had sold them on to Cavalier Aircraft Corporation in Florida, which specialised in civilian executive two-seater Mustangs and military upgraded arm models. Their Cavaliers were used by the US Army and exported to Indonesia, Bolivia and Salvador. Now, this ironic fate and twist, Cavalier Aircraft dismantled the five airframe sections to be reconditioned for Cavalier's rebuilding program, and whether the parts of the Emu Atomic Mustangs were actually used or not will never be known, but leftover Cavalier parts were later sold on to booming US warbird scenes, and certainly, CAC panels must have been seen flying around in North American P-51D warbirds. And there is an ongoing joke that certain parts of P-51s glow in the dark. Subscribe for more.